youtube everybody welcome back to zia later my name is zia and this is episode 13 i'm so excited to be here and i am so done apologizing for saying that i'm excited to be here because i'm always excited to be here and i'm allowed to be excited to be here this is my channel what you can do <laughs> thank you so much for tuning in if this is your first time tuning in i really hope that you love this channel i really hope that you subscribe you like and most importantly i hope that you share this with someone else who you feel needs it and if you are back for yet another video welcome back welcome back thank you for your loyalty thank you for your love guys i do not get tired of saying thank you for the messages the comments i see them all i try my best to respond to all the emails and i definitely respond to all the comments and I, I love you guys and i really appreciate please don't stop you make me feel seen you make me feel affirmed and acknowledged you make me feel really good about being up here every single week and even if it's one person i'm here for i would have done my job okay awesome so this week we're going to be talking about the power of gratitude the power of saying thank you we all know the story in scripture of when the lord cleansed uh, 10 lepers, right? These were people who were physically disabled, physically um, uh, deformed, right? And this was a disability that would really cast people away from society. It wasn't something like a sickness in your blood. It was a sickness you can see when a person comes with, ah, lawyer, they are contagious. We don't go anywhere near them. And these people were ostracized from society. So it took away their whole lives, right? And Jesus heals 10 of these people and only one comes back to say thank you only one comes back to say thank you and it shows just how far um just for how long uh, human nature has just been feeling so entitled and that this is a problem that has existed right from the beginning human nature feeling entitled to things so much so that when you get what it is you want you're on your way and you forget to come back and say thank you to the Lord. If you watch the previous video on consistency, you will notice that one of the things I mentioned on consistency, I'll link the video below, um, but it is just episode, e episode 12. I'll, I'll link the video in the description. You'll notice that I said the power of consistency is that you prove your faithfulness to God. The power of consistency is that God sees that you're here for him and not just what he can do. And that's the thing about gratefulness and gratitude. It shows that you are so grateful that you acknowledge God. That he didn't just do something for you like Father Christmas and you say, Oh, yay! And you run away and you go have fun with what he's done. But you acknowledge the Father and you say thank you. That acknowledgement is so important to God and it's also important for you in your life. So let's get into the power of gratitude. Why should we be grateful? Why should we practice gratitude? What are the secrets and the mysteries surrounding gratitude that you and I can begin to engage with for our lives and for what we need from God right now? Let's get into this video. All right, cool. So I'm going to start our conversation with just laying a foundation that we can all agree from. And then I'm going to build from that foundation to take you to where I want us to get to. So follow on with me. Um, I want us to start off at this point where we can all agree that we walk by faith and not by sight. We can all agree that we walk by faith and not by sight. We can all agree that we are holding on to what we do not see for what we can see, right? A lot of the time in our lives, we tend to forget just how difficult it is to believe. And we tend to even guilt trip ourselves for finding ourselves in places of unbelief and doubt. When you find yourself in a place where you're struggling to believe something, don't ever feel bad. Run to God and say, Father, help me overcome my unbelief. Help me, Lord, I believe. Help me overcome my unbelief. This was a cry that a particular man cried out and said to Jesus. Okay, I'm going to put the, the scripture right here next to me. He said, I believe. Help me overcome my unbelief. That means that it can coexist to believe and to have a little bit of doubt and a little bit of unbelief and that you cry out to Jesus and he helps you with that. You don't feel bad about that. Because here's the thing. We are living in this world, but we are not of this world right? We live in this world, but we are not of this world. But because we live in this world and that we see the things that are here in front of us, it does mean that there is a particular level to which it can get difficult to believe. Because the things that God tells us and the things that God tells us to believe, we don't see. But what you do see is what is in front of you. 
God can come to you and tell you that believe that your husband will be saved. Believe that your husband will accept Jesus as his Lord and Savior. Believe that your family will, will, will come to salvation. But what is faced in front of you right now is you are seeing your unsaved family doing crazy, heinous things. <laughs> And it can become difficult to remember the word that God gave you when you are faced with the reality in front of you. It's like when the Lord comes into your life and says you are abundant, you're the head and not the tail, you're above and not beneath. Or the Lord comes in and says, um, you are a, a, a lender to many nations, you will lend to many nations and you will borrow from none. But your bank account tells you otherwise. These are conversations we need to have, Bazalan. We need to have these conversations, Bangled. We need to. <laughs> We need to. It can get difficult to believe what the Lord is saying and what the Bible is saying when you're looking at your life and reality is staring at you, right? But what do we know? We walk by faith and not by sight. So this is a foundation I want to lay for us. Let's go to John chapter 4 verse 24. It reads as follows. It says, God is spirit and those who worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. God is spirit, which means God is invisible, okay? God is spirit. God is not a man. He does not have a body. He does not have a frame, okay? He is spirit. And those who worship him, me and you, must worship him in spirit and in truth, which means that when you and I begin to engage God, we must engage him from his realm, which means we need to begin to come up higher and start to engage with God from his standard, which is the invisible. Okay? You're still with me, right? We walk by faith and not by sight. God is spirit. And in order to engage with God, to have a conversation with God, to speak the same language as God, we must come up higher and leave this world a little bit. Leave the reality that you are looking at. Come up higher and engage with him from the place of the spirit. Because he is spirit and those who worship him must worship him in spirit. Okay? awesome. Now, when we understand that God is spirit, it means that whenever you are crying out to him for something, it means that whenever you are in need of something, it means that whenever you say, Lord, I need your intervention for a particular issue, we need to be able to understand that God knows the beginning from the end and the end from the beginning right? God is, God knows everything. He knew your need before he called you out to be here on this earth, which means that whatever need you have, whatever desire you have that is godly, that is good, that is a part of God's will is placed by the father inside of you so that you will run to the father to get this desire that he's placed inside of you. Because God's whole plan is for you and I to have a relationship with him. That's why we have dreams. We have careers. We have goals. Why? Because we have these big dreams that we cannot achieve attained by ourselves and we need God to attain them. So what does God do? He puts a desire in us that's too big for us alone so that we run to him and we find him. Okay. So when we are engaging God for the things that we need, for the dreams, the career, the house, the, the, the vision board, the five-year plan, whatever it is that you have, when you're engaging God, and you are, you are crying out, you're calling out for those things. You're calling out for your, um, your efforts to be recognized in the workspace you've been at. Maybe you've been working in the same place for five to 10 years and you haven't been recognized, no promotion, nobody's seeing you, or you've been building a particular company, a particular brand of yours, and the, the campaign managers and the, 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 the clients are not seeing you, they're not funding you. And you're saying, Lord, what is it, Gandhi Lengaga? What is it, why am I not? being recognized why does it seem as though you're not here in this particular topic for me god it's time to come up higher and engage with god in spirit and in truth in the realm of the invisible now you're probably asking me okay zia where are you going with this come on this come on this train with me i'm going somewhere psalm 37 verse 4 okay Here's how it reads. It says, delight yourself also in the Lord and he shall give you the desires of your heart. Okay, so this scripture is often mixed up and it tends to sound as though 
um, it says, delight yourself in the Lord and God will give you whatever you want. No, it says, delight yourself in the Lord and God will give you the desires that you should have for where you are going, for your purpose. God will give you the desires you need to fulfill your purpose, okay? So I'm showing you the scripture to substantiate what I just said to you, that everything you desire from the inside of you is placed by God, right? Every good thing, every purpose thing, everything that is within god's will all right so we're obviously going to i think I should, every single time i say something there's a new video that comes up but we definitely need to speak more about um the kind of prayers that get answered um you may find that you are praying and you're asking the lord for something and it's never answered mostly because it's not in line with god's will so it's not enough that you want something it's not enough that you want something that thing that you want must be in line with the purpose and the will that the lord has for your life and um we'll get into that all right so basically the scripture is telling us and showing us that we have desires that god places inside of us for what he wants to do in us and the desires that he places inside of us that are good that are holy desires like getting a new job desires like growing um growing in your your career in your work field whatever it is that is in line with god's idea for your life these desires are placed by god and can only be achieved with god okie dokie Okie dokie. And now how do we engage with these things that already exist? We come up higher. We go up to the place in the spirit, which means we are engaging with things from the realm of the invisible. That means in order for us to find the solutions, to find the answered prayers that we are crying out to God for, we need to first understand that they already exist. Okay. How do we know they already exist? Because Psalms 37 verse 4 tells us that when you delight yourself in the Lord, he gives you the desires of your heart. So if God is the one giving you the desires of your heart, he's giving you from himself, from his high place, from his place, his realm of invisibility, his realm of totality, his realm where there is no lack from himself, right? God is giving you a desire for something because he's already provided the solution and the provision for it. And your job now is to engage with God and begin to cause it to materialize. Okay? We are praying because we are engaging with the Lord so that heaven can come onto earth. Right, you will you will notice that that is a part of the Lord's prayer. It says, "Let your will be let let your will be done. Let your kingdom come on earth as it is in heaven." So when you're praying and you're asking the Lord for certain things, you're not asking brand new things from God. He placed them inside of you. What you're actually saying is, Lord, let what already exists of me in the heavenly realm, in your realm, where you are, where you are God, where you are spirit, where you are existing, where you are reigning, that realm where it's invisible, where I don't have access. Let the things of my life that already exist there come to me here. That's what prayer is. Okay, and now a very, very powerful tool in doing that exchange and getting that exchange to happen for you is gratitude. That's why we are here today. This is where I was going. <laughs> gratitude is a powerful tool to get everything that the Lord has for you all the way up there to come into your life here. Okay. Once you've assessed your desires and you see that this is in line with God's will, this is in line with God's word, this benefits the kingdom of God. Okay, we're going to have a separate video on this, just looking at your prayers and maybe why your prayers are not being answered. I think I'll make it the next video. I'll speak to the Lord. And the thing about this is when you begin to exercise gratitude, you are engaging with the invisible and you're applying pressure for these invisible things to be pushed out and to come into the natural realm. Okay, let me show you in scripture what I mean. All right, let's go to Mark chapter 11, verse 24. Mark chapter 11, verse 24. Quick disclaimer, guys. This Bible, I have had it, I don't know for how long. My mom got me this Bible. It still has a little note that she... Oh, this is not the one that my mom got me. My mom has bought me a lot of Bibles. Oh, it is. It is the, the one she got me. It says, I don't know if you guys will be able to see it, but it says... Holy Bible presented to Naomi Kulu, if you know, you know, uh, by mom date, um, 30 January, 2016, 
occasion leaving home to Vitz university that this is the bible that my mom got me back in 2016 it's all written here i don't think you'll be able to see it but yeah um so i'm very connected to this bible it's not that i can't get another bible or anything like that it's just that it's a, a little weird and i do have other bibles it's just this one is just so close to my heart because my mom got it for me <laughs> okay cool so mark chapter 11 and guys if you know you know like if your bible is raggedy and it looks something like this you have been through it honey you've been fighting yeah you've been fighting <laughs> All right, let's get into it. Mark chapter 11, verse 24. We're talking about gratitude. We're talking about how gratitude is a tool that we use to engage with God who is spirit. It's a tool that we use to come up higher, away from the things that we see and we go to the places that we do not see because we walk by faith, not by sight. And we've said that we need to engage with God from the place of the spirit. And God must be worshipped in spirit and in truth because he is spirit, right? And that now we are at this place where we are seeing that gratitude is a tool that helps us to engage with God from a spiritual, um, from an invisible realm where we go to God and we start to speak in God's language. We speak the language of the invisible and we begin to cause the things that exist about us in heaven to come onto earth. All right, because everything we need, everything we pray for has already been provided for us. We are only created because everything has already been finished we are only created because there is purpose we are only created because god has already finished our entire story and we are here living it out um, in accordance with god's word right the scripture says that there is the book that is written of us the scroll that is written of us we say lord help me so that i live life according to the way you wrote of me what did you write of me what did you say ziakulu must stand for what did you say ziakulu must be lord i desire to be who you call me to be then when you get to that place that's where now you need to begin to engage with God from the realm of the invisible because you see the things you see here on earth they're distractions it becomes very difficult to believe when God says that you're a millionaire and you look at your bank account today and you're like where right because now it's time to come up a bit high and begin to engage with god and pull these things that the lord has already provided for us okay mark chapter 11 verse 24 let's look at what gratitude how gratitude is a tool that helps us to bring these things into manifestation into the physical therefore i say to you whatever things you ask when you pray believe that you have received them and you will have them Okay, so just like I said, we're going to um, have a conversation about, you know, um, the kind of prayers that are answered by God. Okay, um, and I mean that to say it is not enough to desire something. It's not enough to say I want this so God must do it. it doesn't work like that. So when the scripture says, therefore I say to you, whatever things you ask when you pray, God is not going to help you kill someone. All right, <laughs> if you um, watched the previous video, I... I I made it was about the importance of knowing the scripture it was about the importance of knowing the Bible and knowing the Word of God so that when you're praying you're not wasting your time praying for things that are outside of God's will okay so um, when I when it's written here it says whatever things you ask for when you pray it's whatever things that are within God's will that you ask for okay just a quick disclaimer but we're gonna do a separate video about that therefore I say to you whatever things you ask when you pray believe that you have received them and you will have them the scripture is emphasizing that whatever you want from the Lord that is within his will that you ask for believe that you have received it and you will have it believe believe well what does believe what does it mean to to believe that I, have? I do believe yeah I believe now what you know mm -mm. believe that you have them if you are a person who believes that you now have the thing that you've been crying out to God for aren't you gonna say thank you Boom. Gratitude is a form of faith. Gratitude is the display of faith because you only say thank you once you have received something. So if this scripture is telling you that if you pray, if whatever you say you want, I mean, you pray, you say, Lord, give me something. And the Lord says, believe that you have received it and you will have it. 
your display of belief is to say thank you. The power of gratitude is that it takes you up to the realm of the invisible, where you're beginning to engage with God from his level and from his eye level, from what God sees. And you come up to where God is and you start to speak to God according to what he sees. I can begin to thank the Lord right now and I can say, Lord, I thank you, Father, that Zia Later has its own studio. Thank you, Lord, that Zia Later has its own microphones. Thank you, Lord, that we have the state of the art sound and cameras. Thank you, Lord, that we have the state of the art um, lighting. Thank you, Father God, that you have upgraded Zia Later, that we are a full blown TV station. It is because of your goodness. And I can say that with this ring light in my phone, knowing that all I have is a ring light in my phone. But why am I doing what I'm doing? I am believing. I am showing God and I'm going up to where the Lord is because where the Lord is, Zia Later is a TP station. Zia Later exists. Zia Later exists as a full state of the art. Zia Later exists as a full blown production with a call sheet, with a production coordinator. Do you understand? Zia Later is, employs people. But right now, what do I see? A ring light in my phone. So it's easy for me to be like, yo, Lord, you're talking about Zia later as this, this, this big thing, but all I have is my phone and uh, my ring lights. Whoa, I ain't getting me a Lord. I don't know how to do that. But gratitude takes you up higher because God is sitting with Zia later and he sees it as it is. And when I begin to speak the language that God is speaking, when I begin to speak and I agree with God is with what he's sitting in, what happens? Those things begin to be pushed out from the spirit and they come into the natural realm because I'm engaging with God as what? Spirit. Gratitude is a tool that helps you to walk by faith and not by sight. Gratitude is a tool that helps you to engage with God in spirit and in truth. Gratitude is a tool to pull what heaven already has ordained for you into this here earth. When you start to thank God in advance for things you don't see, you are starting to speak God's language. You are starting to operate from another realm. You are starting to put yourself in a place where the things you see do not deter what you know. You know that God has spoken over your life. You know that God has released a particular utterance um, concerning your life, concerning what you are building, concerning your career, concerning your home, concerning your marriage, whatever it is that you've been crying out to God for. You believe what he has said and you start to say thank you. You say thank you. Why? Because Mark chapter 11 verse 24 says that if you believe you've received it, you will have it. And how can you show God that you believe that you have received it? You say thank you. A person who believes they have received something says thank you gratitude is a sign of belief guys the bible says that anything everything is possible to the one who believes there is power in faith there is power in believing the Bible even says that you, if you have faith, even the size of a mustard seed, I'm going to put a, a picture of a mustard seed here so you can see how tiny that is in someone's hand. Even if you have this much faith, you are able to speak to a, mind, a mountain and tell it to throw itself into the sea. You're able to tell any situation to throw itself into the sea by your faith. And with that same faith, we use gratitude to exercise our faith. We use gratitude to show God that we are speaking the same language as him. We, we use gratitude to tell the Lord that we believe him. We believe him. Yes, Lord, my eyes are not blind. I can see the situation I'm faced with here on this earth. But my father, my spirit is sure. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. You say thank you because you are engaging with God from a place where he is seated. God can't ignore you when you're sitting right next to him. He's got to do what you're saying. He's got to do what you're saying. Let me give you an example. If you go up on the stage and you are talking about me on the stage, I'm sitting in, in the audience and you say, um, you know, and I'd like to thank you, Zia, so much for having me as a guest on Zia later. And Zia, I want to say thank you that you're taking me to a spa next week. And everyone goes, wow, Zia, you're taking her to a spa. Wow, wow, wow. 
Am I not compelled to take you to a spa now because you've gone and said it in front of the people? Am I not compelled? I'm going to have to take you to a spa. It's a similar way with God that when you begin to thank him for something you don't see, he, he kind of he, he, you, you kind of get his attention going and he begins to search out concerning your life, concerning your purpose. Where is this thing that she's thanking me for? Let it go to her now because she thanked me for it. She's thanked me for it. Let it go to her now. She said, thank you. What can I do? She said, thank you. She's believed. And in my word, it says that it's possible. Anything is possible for the one who believes. This is what I love about scripture, guys. It gives us a, 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 um, a platform to have dialogue with God. It gives us a platform and, and a manner in which we can engage with God. Gratitude is so powerful, guys. The Bible even says that when we enter the courts, when we come to God, we should come with thanksgiving. If we have requests and things of that nature, it's great. But come first with thanksgiving. Say, Lord, thank you. Thank you, Lord. And here's another thing that, that gratitude does, guys. It shows you what you already have. Because whenever you're coming to Christ and you're saying, Lord, I need this, I need this, I need this, I need this. With no gratitude in your heart, you will not be able to recognize anything that God is doing because you're so need focused. Gratitude opens up your eyes. You know, I'm an actress, right? And if you are in the arts and media space, you will know that one of our biggest things that we all pray for is stability in our careers, right? We all pray that we are always working and it doesn't always work out that way, okay? It doesn't always work out that way. We do find that we have certain um, months that are slower than others and other months and seasons, seasons are different, right? This is the thing about being an actor, being a, a radio presenter, being a performer, being a musician, being any anything that is within the spec of media Media, arts and entertainment you understand seasons okay and the thing about it is it's easy to find yourself in a rabbit hole where you're just like lord i don't have lord i don't have lord i know i need this i need this i need that but when you're able to say my god you placed me on the one of the biggest shows in africa father god you placed me on an international spectrum. Lord, my name is my name is known at MTV. Father God, I bless you because you have kept me together. You've kept me sustained. Lord, there has never been a time where I do not have. Lord, I thank you that you have provided for me. Yes, my father, I'm praying for the big things like everybody else. I'm praying for to blow up like everybody else. I'm praying for my time to come like everybody else. But Lord, I see your hand even right now you continue to take care of me you continue to sustain me thank you lord you open up your eyes to what god is doing right now and your faith becomes charged because you realize and you recognize that if it were not for god the roof i have over my head would not even be here if it was not for god i wouldn't have the clothes on my back if it was not for god who's kept me together and then you come and you say but my father there's this area where i need you you see, God puts these things in place for us. It's so your faith is charged and you come to him believing that he is. The Bible says that you need to believe that he is and you need to believe that he's a rewarder. You must believe that he is, believe that he's listening to you. The Bible even says that if you believe that God has heard you, you can also believe that he has answered you. God puts all of these measures in place for our own good. Because we need to believe. So he says, start by thanking me. Why? So that your faith is charged. While you're thanking him, you're realizing, Hey, boy, that's Gambella. Oh, God has really been faithful. Wow, God has really been faithful. Okay, now that I'm asking him for this, I believe that he can do it because he's been faithful. God is setting you up for your own success. Be grateful. Honor gratitude. Honor the power that is in gratitude. Even when something is trying to ruin your mood and you can see that this person wants to cut me off in traffic, you say, thank you, Lord, that I have a car. You swerve right on. You swerve right on. Ooh, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Forgive me. I just hopped into my dream car real quick. Thank you, Lord, for my dream car. Thank you, Jesus, for the lights that come up inside of that car. Thank you for that sound it makes, my father, when I turn on the ignition. Thank you, Lord, that I don't need a key to switch on my dream car. I press a button. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> 
listen if i stay here any longer <laughs> This video is gonna be an hour. Guys, I hope that I gave you a little bit of a nugget of the power of gratitude. Gratitude takes you up higher. Gratitude takes you to God's level. Do not allow your human experience to be limited to what you see. This is nothing. What you see is nothing in comparison to what is available for you in the spirit. Begin to engage with God. Begin to engage with the Father because God is the God of heaven's armies. He's the Lord of hosts of angels and the angels of the Lord move on his word. So when you pray God's word, when you pray in the way and you come up higher and you begin to thank him in advance, when you begin to operate from a level of gratitude, the angels of the Lord are released concerning you. Ah, oh, beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. I'd like to encourage you today. Be grateful. Be grateful. Thank the Lord. Before you ask for anything, thank him. Thank him. There's nothing too ridiculous to thank him for. I thank the Lord that I can use my hands and feet. I thank the Lord that I can get up without help. I thank the Lord that I walk. I thank the Lord that I can run. I thank the Lord that I can speak. I have a voice. Because these things that you think are nothing, you don't realize them. What is Zia later without my voice? Can I make a video if I don't have a voice? So I thank God, I've got a voice, I've got a vocal cord, I've got a larynx, I've got, I've got all these things that the Lord has given me so that I can return praise and glory to him. Hallelujah. Have a beautiful week, guys. I pray that you would move with gratitude, begin to engage with God as he is in spirit. Begin to engage with him. Begin to be consistent with God. Thank him this week. This week, just thank God. I know you've got needs, so do I, but just thank him in advance. Thank the Lord this week. Have a beautiful week, guys. I love you. I love you. Please like, comment, subscribe, continue to share, and make sure that other people get a chance to see this video as well. And I hope that you um, will continue to send me emails and um, I will be checking um, all my emails. And of course, I always check the, um, the comment section. But yes, if you are in need of anything, you can find me. Link in the description. I've got everything in there for everything that you need. I love you guys. Have a beautiful week. See you later.